Что же касается твоей Олимпиады, да, то, что ты так очень сильно хочешь сделать, ну, еще для тебя там не тоже подарок или твой. Ты... You may have heard that Russia's Winter Olympics are taking place in the warmest part of the country. But Russia's South is also a hotspot for war, terrorism, and an Islamist insurgency that's trying to carve a Sharia state out of the region that Sochi, the city hosting the games, is in. The Islamists aren't very close to their goal of creating the so-called Caucasus Emirate, which would span the area from the Caspian Sea in the east to the Black Sea, where Sochi is located. But Doku Umarov, Russia's bin Laden, has already declared war on Vladimir Putin's Olympics. Russia's Olympics are the most expensive in history. The Kremlin seems to want everything to be the biggest and the best, and is trying to play down the very real threat of an attack. The games have focused the whole country, and the flame that marked the beginning of the Olympics was carried through all 83 regions of Russia. Since it's been brought to Russia, the torch has gone up to space, to the bottom of the world's deepest lake, and across all of Russia's 10 time zones, an impressive total of 40,000 miles. It's met with some adversity along the way, though, going out a few times, exploding into a fireball, and it nearly set Santa Claus on fire. And there was this gay rights activist who waved a pride flag at it. Luckily, the flame has its very own detail of Russian tough guys to keep it safe. So I decided to follow it through the North Caucasus as it made its way to Sochi to get a feeling for how real the security risks emanating from the region to the athletes and spectators actually are. My first stop was Volgograd, a mainly Russian city that's seen its fair share of terrorist attacks over the last few months. I'm in Volgograd at the train station in southern Russia. This train station was actually hit by a suicide bombing attack a few weeks ago. All in all, over 40 people have been killed in attacks in this city just over the last few months in the run-up to the Winter Olympics of 2014. Today people are actually trying to celebrate because this train arriving is bringing the Olympic torch relay, which has been going all around Russia over the last few months. Uh, and it's on its way from Volgograd to even further south to the Islamic republics uh, of Russia. Uh, and I'm gonna follow the torch relay through Dagestan and Chechnya uh, and find out what the Islamic insurgency is all about. I've never seen anybody carry an open flame on a train, so this should be interesting. This silhouette and shape of this train station has sort of been seared into the Russian consciousness because this is the train station that was hit. Uh, and those pictures were seen all around the country. Perhaps the most shocking thing for Russians about the attacks in Volgograd wasn't the high death toll, but the fact that some of the suspects in the bombing were ethnic Russian converts to radical Islam. If this is true, it means that Russia's terror problems are much more dangerous than previously thought, and that the enemy could be anyone. Why are uh, Russians converting to Islam? Вот эти новые террористы, они отвергают старые традиционные нормы, дискредитировавшиеся. Ну, то же самое православие, которое у нас активно культивируется в данный момент. Они при этом его постоянно разоблачают. 
часы у патриарха, богатые священники, какие-то еще проблемы. Молодежь, видя это, и не находя какой-то духовной или идеологической опоры, ищет ее в другом месте, находит ее в радикальном исламе. Эти христиане, поставь одну, если тебя ударят по одной щеке, то поставь другую. А когда же они идут войной на нас, тут появляются попы, брызгают своей водичкой, чтобы отправить мясо в бой. И почему же мы должны следовать этим заповедям христианским, когда Аллах Субхану Таля побуждает нас бороться с этими куфарами? И почему мы не должны оставлять сиротами их детей? So, no surprises, the security is really tight in uh, Volgograd today. Um, they've basically just flooded the streets with police. Sochi is actually going to get 40,000 police officers to provide security for the Winter Olympic Games. And by comparison, there's 35,000 police officers in the whole city of New York, a city of 8 million people. Sochi's got just barely 350,000. The latest attack in Volgograd happened the day before New Year. Russia's president changed his New Year's address to assure Russians he would defeat the terrorists. Уверенно, жестко и последовательно продолжим борьбу с террористами до полного их уничтожения. But no one in Volgograd wanted to mention the attacks or even say a few words to honor the dead, although the carnage had happened here so recently. I've just asked the organizers of the torch relay if we can go to the site of uh, one of the uh, bombings that happened here. It's actually on the path of the relay, but he just shut us down. He said, no way. Uh, apparently, they don't want the media tying the Olympics and the torch relay to the terrorist attack events that have been happening here. But it just seems silly to pretend that it's not happening. They also told us not to film the front of the train station where the bombing took place. It just seems like they're trying to whitewash everything that's happened here, and I can't figure out you know, why that's a reasonable way for them to proceed. Bringing a flaming torch onto a tram, on the other hand, totally reasonable. Trying to catch the bus to get to the next point where the torch relay is going. I feel like I'm part of it though now. Apparently a video has just surfaced in the internet in which the Islamic extremists who carried out the uh, Volgograd attacks are claiming responsibility. Uh, people are just sharing it here. Um, don't know why it's only surfaced today. Сегодня был выпущен видеоролик в интернете о том, что люди взяли ответственность за теракты, которые произошли в Волгограде. Как вы считаете, это достоверное видео? Сегодня следственные органы и силовые структуры занимаются расследованием дела. И я думаю, что нам надо дождаться, когда будет официально объявлено об этом, о завершении расследования. А вы смогли факел содержать? Какой он? Расскажите. Мы сегодня держали факел и с Максимом Ополем вместе, и с нашими замечательными девчатами на сцене. Он горячий. Он согревает сердца, и я уверен, что придает хорошее настроение, и это тоже очень важно. Вы ничего про видео не можете сказать? 
This is something that they're trying to ignore completely. They just want to sweep it under the carpet and pretend like it hasn't happened. Being here, I can't help thinking about the Boston bombings and the media circus that ensued after that attack, which killed three people. While here in Volgograd, over the last three months, more than 40 people have been killed in suicide attacks and bombings carried out by people both from the North Caucasus and by Russian converts to fundamentalist Islam. And when we've asked the Olympic Committee officials here to take us to the places where the attacks have happened, they've told us they don't want us to film it because it seems like everybody just wants to get on with the Olympics. В принципе, у нас Олимпийские игры получаются такими политическими играми. Все для них, все для этого, показать величие страны и прочее, прочее. Следовательно, если мы будем упоминать в этом русле террористические акты, то они испортят картинку Олимпиады. The Russian authorities eventually confirmed that the two men in the video had been behind the twin suicide attacks and were members of a terror cell based in Dagestan, which was my next destination. There was a shootout in this building yesterday. Three suspected militants were killed and three police officers were injured. And this is totally normal for Dagestan in 2014. The only thing strange about what happened here yesterday is that neither the local media nor the national media reported anything about it. Because like in Volgograd, it seems like there's a ban on coverage of anything related with terrorist activities ahead of the Olympic Games. This is what an apartment looks like after a gun battle. Apparently the police came into this apartment through the window in order to get to the apartment across the stairwell where the uh, suspected militants were holed up. And there were a couple kids here uh, who the police took out and uh, then a grenade came in from the other apartment and all hell broke loose. So the torch relay is going through this town tomorrow and this has got to be pretty worrying for the authorities. And although the Russian media aren't reporting on it, these incidents could still be happening now with the games in full swing. We're just not supposed to hear about it. Dagestan has been racked by conflict ever since Chechen warlord Shamil Basayev invaded from neighboring Chechnya in 1999, sparking the second Chechen war. Suicide attacks like this one on a police station and this shooting in a liquor store have become commonplace. It's turned into the most dangerous place in Europe. the result of a drive-by type attack. The way the militants operate here is a mix of racketeering and moralizing. The owner of a restaurant that was selling alcohol didn't want to pay them off to be able to continue to sell alcohol and therefore they came and shut the place up. And this is the result. <laughs> The conflict in the Caucasus started out as a war for independence in Chechnya, but it's changed over the years. It's been pretty much pacified in Chechnya itself and now it's spread to the neighboring regions like here in Dagestan. 
And not only that, but it's also become much more of an Islamist war and an attempt to create an Islamic state in the southern part of Russia. Russian forces regularly conduct so-called cleanup operations against suspected militants. We saw the aftermath of one in the shot-up apartment we visited. But the authorities' unwillingness or inability to try to capture insurgents and bring them to court has stoked resentment and brought even more young men to the cause of radical Islam. This is the mosque on Kotorov Street in Makhachkala. It's uh, well known because allegedly one of the Tsarnaev brothers, uh, who was implicated in the Boston bombings, visited this mosque when he was staying in Dagestan for a couple of months in 2012. Uh, but it's one that the authorities also like to keep an eye on here that's come under pressure before. I'm going to go inside and try to speak to the Imam and find out what the situation has been like for Muslim believers in Dagestan in the lead up to the Olympics. I asked him if the authorities had stepped up sweeps for extremists in the wake of the Dagestani terror cell taking responsibility for the latest Volgograd bombings. Looks like the setup is a little bit different uh, in Makhachkala. The security concerns are even higher than in Volgograd. They've taken the whole relay off of the roads and brought them into this stadium. Покажите, как выглядит факел. Пожалуйста. Вот. Можете подержать тоже. Спасибо. Запечатлеться тоже. А вам разрешат его оставить себе? А, по-моему, там надо, по-моему, что-то... Я точно не знаю, по-моему, там продают они, по-моему. А, нужно его купить. По-моему, что-то такое, да. A lot of people have been talking about security for the athletes at the Sochi Olympics. The president of Russia is saying they're doing everything they can to guarantee security. But today, here in Dagestan, they're not even quite able to guarantee the security of the Olympic flame, which is why they've taken the torch relay off of the streets and brought it into this stadium. Скажите, изменили как-то сегодняшнее факел отношения? Ну, вроде да. В стадионе несем они по улицам. А почему? Ну, что в целях безопасности, видимо. Хотя первоначально планировалось 42 километра. So now I guess they just basically go in circles. None of the officials wanted to say exactly what the specific threat was in the streets of the city. So rather than stay and watch the slowest relay race in history, we got a head start on the torch and headed to Grozny, the capital of the Chechen Republic.
So we've just arrived in Grozny, uh, we're at the airport and this time the Olympic flame is coming to Chechnya by plane too. So we're going to be waiting here until the flame gets here from Dagestan where we were yesterday and hopefully today we'll get to meet the president of the Chechen Republic. Ramzan Kadyrov is the flamboyant, brutal and unchanging leader of Chechnya since 2005. He's a former rebel whose father switched to the Russian side during the Second Chechen War. Rights groups blame him for getting rid of his opponents through extrajudicial executions. But whatever the truth, his public appearances are enough to terrify local residents. I actually met Ramzan about 10 years ago, which was the last time I was here, and the city was totally in ruins at the time, and he was prime minister then because his father, who was president, had been killed a few months earlier. And since then, he's been elevated to be president, and he's run the place as Putin's surrogate ever since. We're trying to catch up to the flame. We're on Putin Prospect, named in honor of the president of Russia. And you can see why this event is so important for the Russian government because it's another opportunity to show Chechens waving the Russian flag. Making sure the Olympics come off without a hitch is really important to Vladimir Putin because it's his way of showing the world that Russia has returned to the international stage. But it's also really important for the internal audience that he can run a torch relay through the North Caucasus, which have been racked by war. It's his way of showing Russians that he's been able to conquer the Caucasus. And for Ramzan Kadyrov, who's his vassal here, he has to make sure that today's torch relay goes well too. So here we are, another stadium, another torch about to be lit. From here in Chechnya, the Olympic flame is going to head west across the North Caucasus until it gets to Sochi, where it's going to be used in the opening ceremony for the Olympics. And the Russians are saying that they're going to do everything they can to make sure that these Olympics are going to be safe. But as much as they'd like to pretend that they've got it under control, the threat is very real. The Russian authorities have encircled Sochi in what they're calling a ring of steel. There's only one exit and entry point for cars. There are tens of thousands of security personnel to keep athletes and spectators safe. And a battleship lingers off the coast, keeping a watchful eye over the proceedings. The one weak point in this plan is the rest of Russia, which for the next few weeks will be more exposed than ever. 